So we're here on the carpet of much oil. We've got this box that says Eugene or something, whatever it says on it. And in here is supposed to be one of those really plasticky type excavators. Like the one I had before, but this one's supposed to be a bit better. The other one I had, I don't know man, the quality was alright, but it was pretty rubbish. How can we get this up? Sounds like a duck. Oh, look at that. Bloody hell. It's covered in a bit of polystyrene and other bits and bobs. But it actually looks pretty nice, actually. What have we got on that side of the box? That tells you the movements of what it can do. And, you know, other stuff. Got a picture of it on this side. You know, just in case you'd rather look at a picture than the actual thing. And then another picture. And, oh, stuff on that bit of the box. Tells you stuff. Nothing on the, oh, there is stuff on the bottom. That tells you how to how to charge it up and how to do stuff and the remote and everything else. And, yeah. So, what end can we get in? And get in this end. I'm, I'm kind of hoping this is going to be like reasonably good. I don't want it to be like really. I know it's cheap, like as far as RC diggers go. But you know, my ultimate goal, my ultimate goal is to get an actual proper hydraulic one, and for that I need about two grand. So. That's never going to happen in any time soon. But that's my actual goal. But for now, I can mess around with these type of things. Look at these. So, it's made of all plastic. Is there any metal? No, it's all, it's all plastic by the looks of things. Oh, the bucket's caught out of the wire. There we go, look at that. Put that there. What we got here? We've got the remote. Let me get that remote out of there. There's a remote. Got anything else? Nope. That's that. That's all that there. So this remote's obviously, I'm going to put that there so you can see it. This remote is obviously going to need some batteries. How do we... Oh, there we go. It needs two AA batteries. So I've brought my battery box of batteries because I knew I was going to need some batteries, obviously. So we can put ourselves two AA batteries. These ones seem pretty good. I hope they're all charged. It's been a long time since I've actually used any of these batteries because these are the rechargeable Duracell ones I used to use in the, me um, in me transmitters for me, you know, all my nitro cars and bits and bobs. So, oh, there we go. Got a, a flashing red light. So. Let's have a look in here. We should have a battery. Yeah. In here we've got our 7.2 volt. It's 400 milliamp. It's not the very big one. It's just a little small dinky winky one. But that's what we've got. And it just connects onto here. DC 7.2 volt. So let's have a look. Let's plug it in. Oh. Turn that off. Don't want to spoil any of it, do we, for you lot that like all the noises and stuff. I don't personally like noises. Um, if I ever get... Some people, they buy these proper expensive like hydraulic like diggers and shovels and blades and lorries and everything. And they go and buy them little noise boxes to make them make noises. I don't like that. I think it makes them seem cheap like these things, if you have the noise on. Anyway... Right, let's pack up the, the batteries. Let's have a look to see what we can do. I wonder if we can get it to move about. Let's turn the remote on first. You should always turn the transmitter on first. We've got some buttons here. Now, I don't really know what buttons do what yet, but we'll have a look when we... Uh... So let's turn it on. The switch 
happens to be under here, which is quite convenient, I suppose. Right, we've got a bit of a noise. How do we turn that off? There we go. Press that button now. It's got a little. It's got a little uh, a noise. A little uh, megaphone with a, a cross going through it, so you can easily see that. Turn it off now. Ah, so this is ideal. This is exactly how I was hoping it would be. So on a real machine, you have two levers. One is for the right track and one is for the left track. Now on a lot of these cheap RC models, you only have one and it does both. And that's not real. So this has got one right, one left. Sweet. Push them both at the same time and a whole lot moves. Now, let's see what button does the dipper arm. That one does a dipper arm. So you've got that one there, up and down for the dipper. Oh, that one there does the bucket. That one there does the bucket then. And it's good that you can do the bucket, you can do the bucket and the boom and the dipper arm separately because on a lot of them, these cheaper ones, the bucket's like fixed and when you move when you move the dipper arm out, it like like uncurls the bucket, and then when you move it in, it curls it back in again, which ain't ideal because there's some situations where you want to keep the bucket out, but you want to bring the dipper arm in like that. So it's not necessarily ideal, and I think that's I don't like that on the cheaper ones. So what one actually does? All right, so we've got these ones here. They do the slewing. So they do the slewing. Ah, these ones here. That top button there. Oh, that's not very really good for. That moves that up there then. Hello. Let's put stuck. Oh. Well, that button don't work. Oh. Well, what does that one do then? Well, I don't know what that one does there. I, I, that one. I thought that didn't work. But it's actually these two that do the dipper. Do the boom, sorry. Them two there. Those two do that. Alright, so what, how does that button do then? I'll have to read the instructions in a minute. Don't know what that button does. Well, anyway, I right, am. So, that's quite awkward to operate, really. Yeah, that would be quite awkward to operate. But anyway, I think it's pretty cool, man. Let's see if we can climb over the battery box. I don't know whether we will be able to. We'll put the battery box there. So we should be able to climb over it. I've got to remember what, what buttons do what here. We'll put that down like that. Well done. Yep. But now I want to bring it up again now. So I've got so it's awkward. If you want to do, if you want to climb over something, because when you're operating a digger in real life, you'll often want to use the bucket to claw your way up or do something, claw up a, up a bank or do something like that or bring yourself forward or do something or slew around. So what you what you really need is you need the, your moving things up on here in some way so that you can operate them with your fingers and then you can operate your... Your, your digging equipment with your thumbs that way you can track forward or backwards and you can still move everything like you would do with a real digger because you can operate with your feet that would be handy but in this or in this situation so you got to use your finger really to operate like that and then kind of yeah and then you got to remember what one does what because it's all back to front like that so you want to lift that up and then you want to go forward oh and then we've hit the chair in the background so let's, let's go back again. Now you see this. Lift that up again. Right? There we go. Yeah, it kind of works. I think it's all right actually. For the money, what this is, I can't remember how much I paid for it. Now. The tracks are nice. I must say the tracks are rubber. They're very nice. They're very nice tracks. I'm going to get a close up in a minute. Don't panic. I'll get a close up in a minute so you can all have a look. But 
Yeah, I think this was, how much was this? I can't remember. I've literally had it sitting in that box for months and months and months because I never got round to having a look at it. Um, I think it was about £49, which ain't too bad on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description for it and you can have a look. But I think it's all right. Other than the, uh, the dodgy operation where you've got, you know, for your buttons, I think it seems reasonably good. It's 2.4 gigahertz. The controller... While it does rattle, it's all right. Uh, you know, it's it's what you'd expect, really. If you wanted to, I dare say, if you really paid the time and attention to it, you could upgrade the the transmitter for another 2.4 gigahertz one, a better one, maybe. And then you'd better change around all your controls, and then you can have it proper. If you if you have one laying around, or if you are willing to buy an expensive one, you could get a proper uh, digger transmitter and you can have all the all the levers where they should be you don't have to use this one but as it comes out of the box i'm going to say this lets it down the actual unit itself is in is reasonably good uh, i can't really fault it whether it would dig anything any good i don't know it's got quite sharp teeth on the bucket there and the bucket's a decent shape and it doesn't some of them they're, they're quite weak and they and they they move you know what i mean all the joints will move just by doing that but I think it's going to be pretty strong I haven't actually got anything to dig so I can't actually do a digging uh, demonstration but uh, I think it's alright so let's get uh, let's get a close up of it now and you can have a look and see what it's actually like close up so here we go we're close up now well close-ish and we've got some stuff written on the side there you know it's all made of screws and other bits and bobs you got they're obviously pretend hydraulic hoses but they're they're pretty they're in the right place i'll tell you that now the exhaust is all in the right place where you put the batteries pretty handy that's nice uh, inside the cab it's actually got levers and stuff in there you, you can't open it up to put a driver in there it doesn't open but it's got nice stuff written on it. The tracks, like I said, they're rubber. Those are quite nice. The idlers actually all move. Oh, they don't. Oh, they do. The inside idlers move. The, them ones are fake. That's fake. That one's real. Uh, what else we got under here? Yeah, it's all pretty normal. Got the on and off switches there. Uh, do, oh, I forgot to check. Does it slew 360? Is it a true... Some people refer to these as 360s because they, the real ones go 360 degrees. But does this one go 360 degrees? No, is the answer to that. Stops there, so it's not quite 360. Oh. oh, it does if you go... Oh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> I thought it was going to do it then. Well, it didn't. It stops there. So, it don't do a true end, does it? It don't go all the way around. Yeah, on a real one, or on a... Or on a more expensive one, it will just keep going around and around all day long until it gets bored. Until you get bored. But on this one, it will do one turn, then it'll stop. So, yeah, pretty sweet though, man. Pretty sweet. Even the rams, the plastic, obviously, but they're all right, reasonably good. Nice. Well, what can I say? I mean, oh yeah, let's find out what that other button does. So we've got the box. It tells you what these buttons do, and we want number nine. Where's number nine? Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine, program key. Number nine is so. Hang on. Number nine, pro press the program programming button for three seconds to enter the programming mode. Then the function operation of the excavator. Press the programming bu eh? button. Complete the program. I don't understand. In completion of the programming mode, and then press the programming button at the programming mode start. Am I reading that right? Press the key to release the program. 
Press the programming button for three seconds to enter the programming mode. Now it makes sense. Then the functional operation of the excavator. Press the programming button. Complete the programming mode. That doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know about you, love. It doesn't make any sense to me. On completion of the programming mode, and then press... What? That's a new step, though. It's not even... On completion of the programming mode, and then press the programming button at the programming mode start. That doesn't make any sense to me. If that makes sense to you, then congratulations. But that makes no sense to me whatsoever. It appears to be some kind of programming key to program something. But I don't know what it programs. I don't know what it does. Battery instructions. You've got stuff here. you got... A little person that looks like an onion with a stalk coming out of his head and all the other marks. It's made in China, as you would expect. Oh, 1350. There must be another one. Must be a bigger one. But yeah, what can I say about it? I can say it's alright. They, they do dumpers and they do shovels and they do. Um, what do they do? I don't have to do a blade, but they do a shovel and a dumper and a digger that I've seen so far. And I think they're all right. This one's all right. If all, if you want me to get the other ones to review them, unbox them as well, then I will do, man. I will do. Sweet. Apparently, it uh, simulates real RC. Well, it is a real RC. It's not. It's not invisible, is it? 